I'm going to show you how to use a ZNC bouncer today. So assuming your administrator's already got you set up, the very first step is going to be just simply to connect to the, the basically the port and set up the web interface. So you'll notice I've got an HTTPS, uh, then the IP address, and then the port number given to me by my administrator. Hmm, happens to be me, but it's its own thing. So basically then we will log in as ourselves, and then we will enter our password. Okay, and this will be what we see when we first finish logging in. So first thing we need to do is go to our settings. You'll notice we have uh, our username, and we need to change our password because our administrator already knows our password. It's time for us to pick something different. So we'll do that real fast. Then we come over here, and we need to set up nicknames. It, by default, it picks your username. Uh, we'll want to pick something different, so uh, my nick test my nick test two. We'll set our identification to. And then, okay, and we can choose what to set those to. Um, in a lot of cases, that's actual names or usernames or things like that on IRC networks, or it's something completely bogus like I've done here. Um, then what we'll do is we'll come here to the bottom, and these control some of the more important behaviors within the system. So what we'll want to do here is, is that you'll see this auto chan clear or auto clear chan buffer. If you plan to use multi clients, and so that you can log in from multiple devices at the same time, you'll probably want to uncheck this. And the reason for it is is that normally when you connect to a ZNC bouncer, it gives you back whatever the buffer size is. Uh, here we are, whatever the buffer size is on the backlog, so we can see the last 50 lines. The thing is, is that button's checked, then what it does is it erases those 50 lines and we don't get to see them anymore. So uh, we'll want to have that unchecked if we're planning to have multiple devices connect, because we want to see what was there on all of them. So once we've done that, we come down here to the bottom and press Save. Okay, now we need to tell it what we want to connect to. So we come over here to Networks and go to Add. And in here you'll notice we have a network name, which we'll want to set, uh, demo net. And then uh, uh, We'll have to go to nickname, and you'll notice we have this option where we can punch in a bunch of stuff we already about punched in. The reality of the matter is we don't need to change anything here. Uh, if you plan to do multiple networks, then you can control your nickname on a per network level. But if you don't set anything here, it'll just default to what's set in the global settings, and that's usually the best approach. Next, we come down here. We need to make sure that this active is checked, and then we go uh, and enter in a few uh, of the different, uh, basically a few of the different systems on our network. So, uh, Digibase for me, uh, and you'll want to make sure these are all on the same network, because if, uh, if basically if a connection to one fails, it's going to just start trying the next one. Uh, so as a result, you know, these are all on the same uh, UNSC network, I believe it is. Uh, so as a result, they, if Digibase goes down, I can go to Kitsunet. If Kitsunet goes down, Digibase will be used. Okay, and you'll notice there's some additional information here if you plan to use SSL uh, to connect to those. Uh, we're not going to talk about those here. The next piece is the modules. Uh, you'll notice there were some modules in the earlier part, but for the most part, they're more, more interesting at the network level. So you'll notice here uh, I've got uh, several different ones, and a few of these are custom to myself, uh, things I've written. But uh, ones I really recommend, if you haven't already turned them on, is Chan Saver. And then also down here, or not Chan Saver, um, Sticky Chan. And then also, uh, if your servers, if your server uses that server, if the service you're connecting to uses NixServe, NixServe is also super handy to have. And basically, Sticky Chan will make sure that uh, if you accidentally close out of a channel, that the bouncer scrubs that out of the data stream, and you never actually leave the channel. It's a great way of avoiding accidentally pushing X. Uh, and then NixServe just logs in automatically. Remember, though, you have to tell the ZNC server what your IRC password is for NixServe. So don't turn that on if you don't trust your administrator. Once we do that, we push Add Network, and you'll notice now I've got this demo network. So the next step is I go to connect to my network. So in this particular case, um, we're going to add a server. And again, this time, actually, I'm going to do this so I can see what i got to connect to. Uh, 0.205. Okay, and I believe that's the command for this particular one. Oh, 
There we go. Okay, and you'll notice that it didn't work. Well, why? Well, it turns out we still have to provide a password. Uh, the password tells, uh, tells the ZNC bouncer what is our user and also uh, what is our um, uh, what, what is the password allowed to log on. So let's see here. And I can never remember what it is for this particular client. Okay. So we're going to use SSL. OK, that's how it works. And then basically, we'll punch in our address, then our port number, and then the password. Now, the password's kind of interesting. The password is based on your name, which is demo user, and then a colon. And there's some special stuff here if you have multiple networks. We're not going to talk about that. And then your password. Obviously, I've gone so hard to make sure that this is, you know, super secret for us. So then we've added it that, and now we can connect. And you'll notice now I am connected to the server. And you'll notice it changed it to my NIC test, independent of the fact that it wanted to be on NIC Pi. So at this point now, I can say join a channel, and we'll join. Uh, We'll join a demo channel there. Notice I'm conveniently administrator because I'm the only guy in it. And then basically now, uh, if I disconnect, so I'm going to quit my client. Okay. Then I'm going to come over to a different system, and I'm going to join that same channel. And we're going to send a quick message. Okay. And now I'm going to reconnect. So we're going to come back in, and I'm going to connect back to our server. You know, so it reconnects, and you'll see here uh, that I already have an automatic thing. And more importantly, you see this buffer playback, and it says the message. So you can see I have sent back a message and did not miss anything that happened in the middle. So basically, the last 50 lines of the conversation will be played back for me every time I want to watch this. So basically, I don't miss, or at least I can pick up where I am in the conversation. Uh, similarly, you'll notice I still have my little at sign here. I'm still up in this channel. So I can kick people out of my channel because I'm admin because my client never logged out. Um, obviously, if your system uses uh, NixServe or other systems like that, uh, this is less of an issue. But if you're working on more trivial systems where they don't have the more advanced services, this is a great way to, to hold your place, as it were. So uh, one last thing here. I'm going to show you that there is a neat command. Several users uh, exist uh, as modules within the system. And you'll find that there's a status user. The status user t is the, the main user uh, that allows us to talk with ZNC itself. So you'll notice I can list the modules available. I can list all the channels, list who's logged in. I can add servers, remove them, do the whole nine yards right from within here. So it allows me to see specifically what's going on. I can also use it to disconnect completely from the network. So for example, if I don't like uh, the fact that I'm connected to this network, and since I'm currently in a query with status, I can just go disconnect, and ZNC will disconnect from the server. So I'm now no longer connected. Okay. I can reconnect and it'll say it's connecting back to the to the server, connect for me, and it remembers which channel I was in, so it puts me back in it. So, yep, see, there it goes, put me back in my channel. Sticky Chans was one of the ones I mentioned earlier. If we wanted to talk with the Sticky Chans module, yep, let's try that again. There we go. I can send a help command to sticky star sticky chan. Basically, take the star, put it in front of the the name, and that gives you the commands. So I can, you know, stick my demo channel. So demo chan, I believe, is what I called it. Uh, yeah. There we go. So now I'm stuck to it. So if I come over here to demo chan, if I do something dumb like part by accident, and in many clients that'll happen by way of a uh, uh, like a clicking an X in a window or accidentally closing the window. Uh, that's a qu 
query. We'll close that. You'll notice I didn't actually leave my channel. I'm still here. You know, I can part from this channel I want. And my client just keeps taking me straight back into it. So sticky chance, make sure I don't go anywhere. I don't accidentally close a channel. That whole problem with closed windows won't be a big issue. And if you do close the window, locally you'll see it disappear for a bit and then come back, and you'll get the buffer playback. So you can see everything that was in there when you accidentally closed it. Uh, and in and of itself, you never actually leave the channel. Uh, you get to keep your admin status, for example, or something like that. The leaving only appears local to your client. And you can unstick them the same way we stuck them. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, definitely feel free to bring stuff up in the comments, and I'll answer what I can.